Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is still Tuesday, March the 10th, but now it's 8.08 p.m. And I wanted to share this message that I got in Dawn's email. That is from somebody I hadn't heard before. And it's strange how she typed it up, but she found a, a scripture for nearly every sentence. I'm going to read it without the scriptures, but I'm going to copy and paste the way she has it typed, where you can see all the scriptures that back up every, nearly every word uh, in this message. The Lord is reminding us of what we ought to know already, I guess. You know, nobody can remember all this is a kind of lengthy, okay? So, if I kind of hesitate, it's because uh, the scripture part is long and I have to get past it, okay? This is, um, I had to come to my bed to get comfortable, so I hope the lighting's okay. I got on both lamps and a couple over there. I got a couple not plugged in for some reason. I moved stuff around, getting ready for the thrift store to come and pick up a few things and Anyway, let me get started. All right. It's called, as I have told you before, I tell you again. Okay. And it was received on March 2nd, 2020, given to Ginger Barber. I have not heard of her. You can let me know if you are familiar with this person. Probably came from a blog or maybe she just... Um, Knows Dawn, sent it to her, whatever. All right. I do believe this is from the Lord, but um, I mean, it's it's it's. Um, I I understand now why he's. It's called as I have told you before. I tell you again because. Every line comes from scripture, so it's kind of hard to say it would come from anyone else. But let me read it, and um, you see what you think, okay? All right. As I have told you before, I tell you again that I am with you wherever you go. You are not alone. I will fight your battles for you. You are not meant to fight this battle. All you must do is stand firm in your belief and trust that I am here with you. I am working all things out for your good and for my glory saith the Lord. In your doubt and confusion, lift your eyes up and see me. For I see you and I know where your thoughts have taken you. I have heard your cry and I know your heart. Praise me through your desert. Worship me through your storm. Know that I am the Lord your God, and I am bringing you out. I am reaching down to pick you up, to lift you out of this storm with my righteous right hand. I will set your feet upon a firm foundation. I am re-establishing you. I am purifying new areas of your life that you have given to me, saith the Lord. Do not be afraid. Do not be worried. Just continue to give everything to me. Press in deeper to me. 
You have asked me to show you the high places in your life. I am showing them to you. Don't let there be doubt and confusion. Instead, know that I am providing the clarity of past events you have sought and I am showing you glimpses where I am taking you as you allow me to purify, redeem, and restore your mind, your heart, and your spirit, saith the Lord. Notice he said, let me repeat something. Where did it start? I am showing them to you. Okay, he says, press in deeper to me. You have asked me to show you the high places in your life. Now, maybe not everybody has asked for that. But he says, I am showing them to you. Don't let there be doubt and confusion. Instead, know that I am providing the clarity of past events you have sought, and I am showing you glimpses where I am taking you as you allow me to purify, redeem, and restore your mind, your heart, and your spirit, saith the Lord. That means we have to allow him. Trust me, for I love you with an everlasting, unconditional love, my child. You are mine, and I am yours. I am your savior, your protector, your provider, your healer. I am the lover of your soul. I died for you. My blood has covered all your sins, and they have been made as white as snow. I remember them no more. That, I'm sure he means the sins you have already committed and asked for repentance you you've asked for forgiveness for he's saying he has made them white as snow i remember them no more when you sin and you ask for forgiveness he forgives you and he remembers them no more because they're blotted out of the book they keep you see they, people that don't believe that, that they believe all their sins are covered, even all the future sins, so they don't have to repent. They don't realize they all get written down, however that is, however they do it. And when you ask for forgiveness, they're blotted out. Well, what if you're saved when you're, say you're 30 and now you're 60? You've gone 30 years being born again, maybe living for Christ, aren't we all? But don't we all do things every day that we wish we hadn't done? We wish we hadn't said or even thought. Thoughts of complaining. I'll be thinking of something. I'll be like, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm thinking, you know, I'm sitting here complaining and I... I, re I repent and I praise you for everything I have or something like that because I'll realize that's wrong for me to think that way. We all do it at least once a day. You go 30 years and that slate is no longer white as snow. I wish they could understand that. Oh, where was I? Okay. 
I remember them no more. So don't let your mind dwell on the past. See, he's talking about the past. Don't let the enemy of your soul make you feel shame for who you've been in the past. I loved you then. I love you now. And I always will love you, dear one, saith the Lord. The Lord, let me just interject right here. He's going to be loving a whole lot of people right into hell. And you think that'll make him happy? No. But he's going to be a just, Jesus is going to be the judge. And he's a just judge. Nothing unholy will enter the kingdom of heaven. Where else you go? There's heaven, there's hell. That doesn't mean he doesn't love the people who are going to have to be sent there. See, he still loves us. It's like when you have to punish your child because they've done wrong. You punish them because you love them. Now, it's not the same. It's not, hopefully you don't throw an eight-year-old out the door and never let him back in. Because he didn't do his homework or whatever, you know, how bad can an eight-year-old be? I guess some in some areas can be pretty bad already, but the average eight-year-old. So maybe he stole or broke something and lied. And then you find out he really did, okay? Maybe it was something you really liked. He wouldn't say, yeah, I did it. I'm sorry, Mom. And he just kept lying. No, I didn't do it. The baby did it. I saw her do it. Whatever. I'm can't, hard to think of an example right now. The point is, as a parent, we're supposed to discipline our children. The father disciplines us through our lives, hoping to turn us around. It might take letting us get a disability like mine, perhaps, to keep get me all alone. That and the, how I feel about the Lord. It's a combination of things, but whatever the Lord has to do, He'll do it to get your attention. To get you out of the world if He has to. When He, when He, he knows your heart, but you, but he may know the distractions that are keeping you from fulfilling what you're desiring to do because the worldly things keep getting in your way. Anyway, um, I didn't mean to preach in the middle of reading this, but uh, that just came out. I had to say it. All right. He loves you. He always will. He does not want anybody to go to hell. The word says, It is the Father's will that none should perish. Somebody left me a comment to that effect, that even the bad guys will be saved and no one will go to hell. Well, I had to delete it. That was, I could have okayed it and then responded to it. It was in my spam. I was like, "What this?" It was worded and all. It was lengthy and um, lies from the devil. I hope you see this video. Not everybody is going to heaven. If you get turn around and repent. And start loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. You're going to heaven. You'll screw up and you you just say, I'm so sorry, Lord. You pick yourself up. You dust yourself off and you keep going. We all mess up every day. Every day. And as you grow and grow, your mess ups become smaller. But there's still things you shouldn't do. We're, we're imperfect human beings and we're going to stay imperfect human beings until we're out of here. 
So don't ever give up. Don't anybody ever give up. All right, back to the message. One last paragraph. Live in freedom. For who I have set free is free indeed. Continue to pray. Seek my face. Humble yourself. Submit yourself to me fully. And I will cause a release in your mind, heart, and spirit. Let me continue to transform you by renewing your mind daily. Daily. Renewing your mind daily. Release what's behind you and reach forward to take hold of what's ahead as you do you will begin to behold who you are in me saith the lord of hosts you will begin to behold who you are in me that's a beautiful message and um, I guess I'll end it there. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, myself and my computer over each and every one of you, your devices and your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.